Good morning guys and welcome back to my channel. So today's video I am so so excited for. This is my first official haul of 2023 and this is an incredible incredible haul. I do have some more perfumes on the way and I have a whole bunch of samples and decants and I have just a plethora of perfume goodness coming for you guys for the next few months. I'm super super excited um, and the perfumes in today's video are phenomenal. So I'm going to go in order from the ones that are really nice slash great to the ones that are mind-blowing so make sure you watch all the way to the end and one of these perfumes in today's video is a new addition to top 10 best ever for me personally so if you are new to my channel welcome my name is Alithia and on this channel we talk about perfume I share with you my favorite discoveries and my perfume journey and I would be honored if you would consider subscribing do make sure that you turn on your bell notifications that way you will be notified every time I upload a video otherwise sometimes we upload videos and they kind of get lost in the abyss of of all the other perfume content that's out there so if you want to see the latest from me do make sure that your notifications are turned on also before we get started leave me a comment down below and tell me what one of your favorite new perfume discoveries is or tell me what you are most lusting after and with that out of the way let's get started in today's video all right you guys so i'm low-key nervous for today's video because I have so much anticipation for these perfumes. I'm just so obsessed with them. And you know when you get so excited for something that you start to think like, can I even effectively deliver what I have to say? <laughs> That's how I feel about these fragrances. I'm just preparing in my head right now for the amount of like sensory overload that they give me. And of course, I'm gonna smell them all again here. And it's just like, and I just wanna make sure that I effectively relate to you how good they are and like how much I love them. The first couple of them are nice, but not in my opinion, like mind blowingly, like they're not as mind blowing to me as the ones I'm going to share at the end. Um, but they're all great. I think that you can't go wrong with any of them. And yeah, so I'm just kind of like mentally preparing here. Okay. Let's start out with a couple that you've probably heard about. Well, one is like super famous and let's just jump on in. Okay, you guys, so the first perfume, and again, we're going from least favorite to most favorite. And although I love this perfume, it sort of pales in comparison to me compared to my favorite one from this video. So that tells you how good my favorite one is because this one's pretty good. <laughs> and this is Zerjoff Ivory Root. So I'm not gonna spend too much time talking about this perfume because this is a pretty well-known perfume in the perfume community. It's also gets a lot of hype. It's on a lot of people's you know, top Zerjoff lists and things like that. So this is not a new perfume to you, but it's new to me. Um, this is when I actually had a sample of probably a year and a half ago. And I just remember being blown away by this perfume and the performance and the scent profile. I had never smelled anything quite like it. It just was one of those wow perfumes that just really makes your jaw drop to the floor. You guys will notice over the next couple months as I share with you some of my new finds that my tastes with perfume are evolving a little bit. I'm starting to really like a little bit more of those deeper and woody fragrances. I'm starting to like amber a little bit more. I'm starting to like a little bit of spice, even a little bit of oud. So not that my tastes are completely changing. I would just say that they're expanding. So all the things I liked before, but I'm discovering more perfumes that I like that are along sort of this um, olfactive family. So I'm really, really excited about that because this is a perfume that a couple years ago, I don't think I would have been able to welcome into my collection. And now I'm just really, really enjoying it. So the notes that you have in this fragrance are spicy notes, sandalwood, allspice, patchouli, and basil. So this is essentially a very warm, pretty sweet, I would say, slightly vanillic, like there is a touch of a vanillic creaminess in here, um, spicy, woody fragrance. I don't get straight up sandalwood per se in this one. To me, this is more of a warm, cozy, spicy, woody fragrance with even a vanillic undertone. But what I love about this perfume is once you get it on your skin, it kind of settles down and becomes like this super warm, cozy, enveloping, inviting spicy fragrance. I do get a ton of different spices. I get like a lot of nutmeg, allspice, like some of those sweeter, warmer, cozier type of 
spices and I feel like this would be a great one for the fall winter especially around the fall Christmas time I feel like this would be a great holiday scent cozy and inviting and warm so I think this is not the best time of year to be starting to give it a lot of wear time to me this one really does scream like November December I feel like it really gives me November December vibes when it's cold outside it would perform so well in the cold weather um, going into spring the days are getting longer the sun's getting up earlier I don't think this is going to be a, a frequent reach for me but I do absolutely love this scent and I'm so happy to have it in my collection and I'm so happy that I'm starting to feel like I can actually wear some of these perfumes and the bottles are just so so stunning with Zerjoff. I would like to explore more from Zerjoff and develop a bigger Zerjoff collection. Another one that I really really like is Naxos 1861 Naxos. I have a decant of that one and it is a beautiful honey tobacco. Not sure if it's one I would reach for a whole lot, but I absolutely love the scent profile. And that is the other Zerjoff that I've been really kind of testing out. And I'll let you guys know how I feel about that one in the future. This is just, this fragrance just smells incredible, you guys. It's spicy, it's warm, it's vanillic, it's enveloping, it's addictive. And I think this is the type of perfume that if you wear it, people will stop you and ask you what you're wearing. It's just that kind of, it just has this like, it has this like magnetic enveloping pull to it. Warm and cozy and a little vanillic, very heavy on the spice. You do have to like spiciness to like this. And I think that was what put me off from it originally when I first smelled it. I just kind of thought no, you know, and I really had myself in a box. I really thought that's too spicy for me or that's too woody or that's too masculine. These days I'm really trying to broaden my perfume horizons and try new things and actually give things a proper wear test before I make a decision about whether or not something would work out for me. That has been just a game changer for me, you guys. I do recommend it. You do have to like a spiciness. You do have to like a bit of a woodiness, but I think this is perfectly unisex and could go either way. Once I do get it on my skin, it becomes a little more warm and vanilla. It's just perfectly like centered unisex. I don't think it leans masculine or feminine. I think it's just perfect down the middle. So this is in our number seven spot. Amazing perfume, but the best is yet to come. So this next one is one that I actually thought that I had discovered like all on my own and I was so excited. And then right after I purchased this bottle, I started noticing that this bottle was actually on people's thumbnails and I was like, oh shoot, like I thought that I had made like an original discovery <laughs> and it's not an original discovery. Apparently it's got a lot of hype. So this is from Javoy, I think that's how you say it. And this is called Fire at Will. So it's in this huge, super heavy bottle. And this was actually a sample, like I had gotten a sample of this with a previous purchase. And that's how I discovered this perfume was actually with that sample. As soon as I sprayed it on paper, I knew that I wanted to put it on skin. And as soon as I put it on skin, I knew that I needed a bottle. And I literally ordered a bottle that moment. This was a love at first sniff for me. I will say right off the hop while I'm thinking about it, it's not the most powerful fragrance. It's not the most beast mode fragrance, but it's got really good performance in general. It's got decent sillage and good lasting power and it's utterly addictive and super sweet and just incredible. So before we get into the notes and I tell you what it smells like, I'm just going to give you like an overview of the bottle. So again, super big bottle. It has a reflective metallic cap on it. And on the side there, it does say fire at will. Kind of a unique bottle, extremely heavy. And this is a large bottle. This is 100 mils. So I do think this is great value for money because it's not one of the most ridiculously priced niche perfumes. It's like a pretty decent price. I think it was around the 200 and like $25, $30 mark, but you get 100 ml. And this is essentially a very sweet, sugary vanilla perfume. So this one reminds me a little bit of something along the lines of Indel Tijota, Mazzolari Vanilla, Exidolo's Love and Crime, a little bit Kaoli Vanilla, those kind of very sweet, sugary vanillas. If you like something super sweet, super vanilla, um, a little bit like brown, sugary, warm, cozy. If you like Bath and Body Works, um, warm, warm vanilla, brown sugar, those kind of scents, this will be right up your alley. This also lasts longer for me than Kaoli Vanilla 28, so it is a quite a long-lasting fragrance. This was actually my scent of the day yesterday. This is one of the ones I've had in my collection for a while now. I've been able to give it a proper wear. Yeah, so the hype is real with this one. If you guys have seen it bouncing around and wondering, is it really that good? It is really, really good. It isn't um, super, super strong, potent, 
deep beast mode. It's not that kind of perfume the way like Ivory Root or something is. It's much lighter and softer, but it has good projection, especially in the cold weather. I think this performs really, really well. And this lasts forever on my skin, you guys, and also forever in the clothes. So this has really, really good performance. And when you catch it on the air outside, it just gives you this super addictive, sweet, intoxicating, sugary vanilla scent. I wouldn't say it's like sickly sweet. There's something about this one that is really nicely blended and really warm. Um, it's kind of like, it reminds me a lot of Vanilla 28 from Kaoli. It's that type of vanilla. So it's not like sickly, sickly sweet. Even though they both have brown sugar, this one has brown sugar, it's not sickly sweet the way something like, even Mazzolari Vanilla is sweeter than this. This isn't so much on the caramel direction for me. For me, this is much more of that like, almost like an ambery, warm, sugary vanilla. So the notes that you have in Fire at Will are vanilla and mimosa in the top. In the middle, you have vanilla and brown sugar, and in the base, you have musk, amber, and vetiver. So yeah, this does have a bit more of an ambery pull to it. It's very warm. If you like those kind of perfumes, you will like this. If you like Kaoli vanilla, you will like this. Um, and if you have similar taste to me again, you will like this. <laughs> it's just a great, great, great vanilla scent. There's a lot more vanilla perfumes that are out there, you guys, and make sure you're subscribed. This one's like trending at the moment. Everybody's talking about it. It is a great perfume, but make sure you are subscribed and that your notifications are turned on because I'm going to introduce you to probably about 10 to 15 new gourmands, um, vanillas, chocolates, caramels that I have not seen pop up anywhere else. So they're gonna be new to me and hopefully they'll be new to you. But if you like this kind of perfume, um, definitely make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out on my future vanilla recommendations. But this one I think is definitely a great option, you guys. I think, like I said, I think you get really good bang for your buck. The price is not crazy. The performance is fantastic. It's super addictive. It's super delicious. So yeah, that is my second perfume from this haul. I think it's phenomenal and I definitely 10 out of 10 recommend. Okay, you guys, the next one is new to me, um, maybe new to you, and this one is actually a new release. This is the newest release from the Armani Privé, and this is Santel Donsha. So this was not a blind uh, purchase. Actually, two of the fragrances in today's video were blind and the rest of them were not blind. So two out of seven were blind, five out of seven were not. So this is one that I had smelled at a perfume counter at a Neiman Marcus, I believe, and I sort of was intrigued by it, but this is a sandalwood perfume. This is primarily sandalwood, and if you guys know me, you know that I don't have a lot of sandalwood dominant perfumes. I often struggle with sandalwood. Um, something like Le Labo Santal 33, I found that one to be just a little bit too creamy, a little bit too almost in that like, dill pickle direction, like very heavy, heavy sandalwood for me. And Santal 33 was just a little too uh, much for me. It was a little too potent. This one is a sandalwood perfume, but this one for me is a lot fresher and a lot softer and a lot more wearable than Santal 33. This is an eau de toilette concentration, but don't be fooled, you guys. This has good performance, very good performance. So the notes that you have in here are Calabrian bergamot, Guatemalan cardamom, violet leaf, Elemi, Olibanum, Musk, Sandalwood, Dreamwood, and Virginia Cedar. And this one is so beautiful. Absolutely stunning. So this is primarily a sandalwood fragrance. At first sniff, it does remind me, I think it reminds everybody of Santal 33 from Le Labo because it is a heavy sandalwood dominant perfume. It also reminds me of Maison Louis-Marie Bois de Balancourt, which is also um, a sandalwood heavy fragrance, which a lot of people also say reminds them of Le Labo Santal 33. If you're asking me out of those three, this is my current favorite. I just absolutely love the way that this smells. So this is predominantly sandalwood, but this is a much fresher sandalwood. This is a type of sandalwood you could wear more in the spring, summer. I think you could wear this all year round, even though it is kind of a woody fragrance. It's a very woody scent. So what makes this one special is that it has quite a heavy dose of bergamot in it. So for the first little while after you spray this, for the opening in the mid, you get quite a lot of bergamot. It's very fresh. This is classy. This is elegant. This is sophisticated. It smells expensive. It has really good last power. I actually wore this the other day as an all day wear test. I got a compliment on this perfume. There's also cardamom in here. So you do get a little bit of a soft, spicy kind of a warmth and a softness about this. This is not a dry, screechy sandalwood. This is more of a fresh, like spring, summer, um, very, very wearable sandalwood. And I absolutely love it. Um, 
I think this is going to be so gorgeous in the spring and summer. I cannot wait to wear this. To me, this reminds me of like a fresh summer day. It just reminds me of like a fresh summer day, but with a lot of sandalwood. And this is one of those perfumes that the longer it sits and dries down, the better it gets. So you're going to be left with just this intoxicating sandalwood trail all day. It's phenomenal. I really, really do recommend it. And you also don't need very much of it. So it's well worth the money. And because this is an eau de toilette Armani Privé, this is actually in the designer price point. So it's not super, super pricey. All right, you guys, now we get into the heavy hitters that I'm obsessed with. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm getting excited just looking at the bottles sitting on the floor. These ones are like my favorite, um, new obsession. Can't wait to wear them. I don't have a full bottle of this one, but my full bottle is on the way. So this is the new release. One of the new releases from Amouage and this is Guidance. This was also not blind. Obviously I do have a sample here and this sample I actually got from Neiman Marcus when I was down in the States. And you can see that it's a little bit worse for wear. I've had this sample for quite a while. I've tested it. It also was leaking, unfortunately. And this fragrance is kind of funny because I wasn't really sure if I absolutely loved it. It was, it was kind of a really strong like at first sniff, um, but I hadn't tested it on skin and I hadn't really had much time with it, but I brought it home because I wanted to review it for you guys and have some more time with it as well. The whole time I was on vacation, this little sample was sitting in the rental vehicle and I feel so bad for my boyfriend. He is so tolerant and so good because he is very prone to getting headaches from really strong fragrances and Amawa is super strong and every time we would get in the vehicle all you could smell was this perfume and he didn't complain he didn't ask me to throw it out he was so good and so tolerant and now every time I smell this perfume it reminds me of my vacation because yeah, it just, it really just literally takes me back to like driving around, getting a Starbucks, going shopping, drinking coffee, spending time with him. It was so nice. So I already have scent memories associated with this uh, perfume, which is kind of nice and kind of funny. Every time I smell it, I think about my poor boyfriend in the car with Amouage floating around in the air. This is the first perfume from Amouage, you guys, that I liked at first sniff, like really, really liked at first sniff and um, sort of endeavored to go out of my way to find a bottle. So that makes me so happy because it wasn't some like random blind purchase that I was just hoping I would like. It wasn't like a hyped up purchase that I thought I would just talk myself into. This was actually a perfume that I tested you know, I've had this sample for a while. I tested it on skin and fully wore it before committing to a bottle. I'm just so, so thrilled and I can't wait to get my bottle. So this is a warm, creamy vanilla floral perfume is how I would describe it. This perfume is everything I wished Parfums de Marly Cassilli would have been. I told you guys that in another video that I had found a replacement or in my opinion, an even better fragrance than Cassilli. And this is that perfume for me. This gives me everything that Cassilli gave me but does it better in my opinion. So in this perfume, you have top notes of pear, hazelnut, and olibanum. In the middle, you have osmanthus, saffron, rose, and jasmine. So you've got a beautiful, like creamy, apricot-y yellow floral. You also have a super sexy jasmine. You also have this airy, gorgeous saffron. You have like a nuttiness and you have like a sweet pear. It's just, and it just doesn't sound like much to say it, but you guys, this is truly one you have to get your nose on. It just smells phenomenal. And in the base, you have sandalwood, vanilla, acagala wood, ambergris, and labdanum. And oh my gosh, I don't even know what to say about this perfume, you guys. I really don't even, I just don't even know what to say. I'm obsessed with this perfume. It smells so delicious, so creamy, so floral, so beautiful. On the skin, this is 10 times better. And this is a potent, potent perfume. Amouage is a pretty, pretty, pretty penny. And I ordered this perfume directly from the Amouage house. It was pricey. Um, there was, I couldn't find it anywhere else. I couldn't find it in department stores online. Um, I could only find this at the Amouage house. So it's gonna be here, I think, next week. I'm so excited. This is going to be one of my definite rotations for spring, summer. It's just, and it's just phenomenal, you guys. It smells so darn good. And on the skin, this is even better than on the strip. If you smell this on the strip in the store and you at all like it, or you think, oh yeah, that's pretty, put it on your skin, you guys. I'm telling you, put it on your skin, walk around. This thing has monster longevity, really good sillage. You do not need very much. A couple sprays will last you and will do you for the whole day. 
It's just absolutely stunning. So it has that creaminess that Castilli has. It has the fruitiness that Castilli has. It has the vanillic quality that Castilli has, but this just does it so much better, so much better. I'm telling you, you have to get your nose on it. And if you liked Cassili, or if you're like me and you were like, I like Cassili, but it doesn't blow my mind. I like Cassili, but it doesn't blow my mind. Check out this one because this is everything I wished Cassili would have been. I've told you guys that I was kind of like tempted. I was like, mm, maybe I'll go and get Cassili in the future because I kind of like the way it smells, but I wasn't wowed by it. It didn't absolutely wow me. Whereas this one absolutely wows me. Yeah, I'm just completely like blown away, like blown away by this perfume. It has the perfect combination of this delicious, almost gourmand, nutty, like vanillic quality, this creamy, very well blended sandalwood. You can't even really pick out sandalwood. It is just so well blended. You've got this juiciness from the pear. You've got the beautiful classic white florals. You've got this airy quality from the saffron. You've got this like apricot fruitiness from the osmanthus. It's just like Wow, you guys, such a good perfume. I'm obsessed with this one. I cannot get enough of it. I wish that Amouage would ship faster. I paid a lot for that perfume and it's taking a really long time to get to me. Yeah, can't wait to get it. New favorite. Also, you guys, the bottle, the bottle is exquisite. Can we talk about the bottle? Um, and I'm just so pumped because it was, like I said, the first Amouage that I was became like obsessed with where I wasn't just trying to talk myself into liking it because everybody else was talking about it. You know what I mean? All right, you guys. So this is another one that I discovered when I was on vacation and I became obsessed with it. And this is one that I tested when I was at the Christian Louboutin, the Luby World um, fragrance counter. And I'm pretty sure I had smelled it before, but this was a long time ago. I was a little bit overwhelmed. They had a lot of perfumes there. And like I said, my scent tastes are starting to evolve and expand a little bit and I'm starting to really enjoy a little bit more of these like woody ambery labdanum type of fragrances which is something I wouldn't have been into a couple years ago and this perfume you guys I sprayed this on a strip in the store within minutes of spraying it on that strip I knew that I loved the way that this smelled and at the time at the counter I didn't know if I loved it enough to commit to a bottle but I took that paper strip with me you guys and I kept that perfume strip with this perfume literally like a psychopath in my purse for the, the whole rest of the vacation, like the next four or five days, I had it in my purse and I kept bringing it out and smelling it and smelling it and smelling it. And I was just so addicted to the way that this smelled, couldn't stop smelling it. And I knew I was like, I'm pretty sure I need a bottle of this. I'm pretty sure I need a bottle. And I could have gone back and purchased it, but I didn't for some reason. I was making myself wait because I didn't want to be hasty. I do have a habit of making excited, rash decisions about perfumes, especially on vacation and then later regretting it. So I didn't want to be hasty with this one, but I literally kept that strip with me. And my boyfriend was like, what are you doing? Cause like every 10 minutes, literally I would like pull this paper out of my purse and be like, give it this huge sniff. And I'm sure I looked like a psycho to everybody who was around me. I was just like all day smelling this paper, smelling this paper. I was like, okay, I'm getting a bottle. Like I and the paper strip was starting to get faint finally. And I was like, I have to have that perfume. I have to have it. So this is Christian Louboutin's Luby Prince. It is in this really interesting, really crazy looking bottle, like super exorbitant. It does have like a snake at the top and the snake's head is in the shape of a Louboutin high heel, which is kind of cool. And it's in this really dark, like ambery looking bottle. This bottle is so heavy. So I just sprayed it on the paper here. Oh my gosh, this thing, this thing is incredible. So when you first spray it, I think the labdanum does shine through a little bit more. And as it dries down, that tonka bean probably comes through a little more. And maybe that's what gives it more of that feminine vanillic quality. Oh my God. Oh my God, this is so good. And this smells expensive and it smells luxurious and sophisticated and it smells like money. This perfectly encapsulates richness on a luxury vacation to me. Maybe because it makes me think of my vacation. Maybe because, I don't know, just, oh my God, it's just so good. It's just so good. The vibes that it gives me and the, I don't know, you guys, <laughs> I don't know, you guys, you just need to smell it. It's so good. And you need to give it a bit of a chance because at first spray on paper, you will get a lot of a deep, like woodsy labdanum, this like 
ambery, leathery kind of thing. And you might think to yourself, mm, that's masculine, that's not for me. It's definitely not your typical like feminine fruity floral. This is miles different from uh, Guidance, from Homage. Like they are two completely different planets, two completely different planets, but I love this. It's so intoxicatingly beautiful. This reminds me of a beautiful, well-to-do woman with a really nice pea coat on, and she's just, you know, super sophisticated, and she's got lots of money, lives a very luxurious lifestyle. It's just so good, and the more it dries down, it becomes more and more feminine and vanillic, and it's super addictive and super Moorish. I can't stop wanting to smell this and powerful like sillage longevity projection you will not be disappointed in this if you like this type of fragrance i'm also a little bit obsessed with um christian louboutin in general i already have luby rouge which is another favorite that was a blind buy a couple years ago and it's still one of my top favorite perfumes of all time that one is more feminine than this one you guys are going to probably ask me this one's more masculine but still unisex whereas luby rouge i think is definitely more feminine I don't think I would want to smell Luby Rouge on a man. This I would definitely like to smell on a man, but even this has a bit of a feminine spin on it because it is it is kind of vanillic in my in my mind. So it's just like a beautiful woodsy, ambery, vanillic, <sighs> delicious, beautiful perfume. I don't even know what else to say. I don't even know what else to say about it. And this thing is just so potent. Like one spray of this in my room, you guys, will dominate the upstairs of my house. I can smell it as soon as I walk upstairs. It's just super potent and beautiful and I just love it. So enough rambling about that one. That is my third last perfume in today's video and I'm utterly obsessed with this one. All right, guys. So the second last perfume in today's video, this one is so incredibly mind-blowingly good. This is an absolute masterpiece. This is one of the best perfumes I've ever smelled in my life. It's one of the most powerful perfumes. It's one of the most compliment-getting perfumes. I just literally had my socks knocked off by this perfume, like mind blown, mind blown. This is one that literally makes my jaw drop to the floor and I have to pick it up. This was also a blind buy, by the way. Could have gone either way. All blind buys are risky. I'm so glad that I blind purchased this and this is Maze and Sears Ombre Magique. So the notes that you have on the top are Mandarin Orange and Orange Blossom. In the middle you have Cashalox, Cardamom, and Bulgarian Rose. And in the base you have Ambergris and Bourbon vanilla. So those notes, just to mention them off the top of your head, it sounds like, okay, like that, that sounds nice. You know, I love orange blossom. I really like cardamom. I really like bourbon vanilla. Ambergris is really good depending on like which perfume it's in. It sounds like a nice perfume, right? It just sounds like, like a nice perfume. <laughs> no, you guys, no, this is a masterpiece masterpiece perfume totally blows your mind better than you could ever imagine better than you could ever imagine so oh my god oh my god you guys wow <laughs> you guys i'm this is the problem this is why i didn't want to film this video because i knew that it would just like make me too excited i knew that it would just uh, it oh my god <laughs> I, you know, it's good when I can't put into words how I'm feeling about a fragrance. I don't even honestly know where to begin. Let me just get the strip. Okay. So, all right. So I will tell you on paper, it does not do it justice. You have to put this on your skin. It smells totally different on skin than it does on paper. And it smells a hundred times better. On paper though, it's very, very pretty, but you don't get the full uh, appreciation for what this is going to smell like until you get that dry down and then you, and then your mind is blown. So, so, okay, God, I don't even know where to begin. So it's got this sweet, I don't even know how to describe it, you guys, because it, it's so well blended that for me to tell you the notes and what I pick up, it just doesn't even make sense. You just have to try it. Just trust me. So yes, you get this like sweetness, of course, that you have orange blossom and orange in the opening, but you also at the same time get this burst of, you kind of get all the notes at the same time. You kind of get this burst of ambergris. You get this delicious, intoxicating, super, super heavy bourbon vanilla. You get this like incredible soft, like soft, spicy cardamom 
all at the same time you're getting all of these fragrances you guys i don't know what cashalac smells like it's a synthetic no i do not know what it's meant to smell like but maybe that's what's giving this an edge as well Okay, paper just does not even do it justice. The paper sucks, actually. It smells better at the atomizer than it does on paper, actually, because you're getting, it's not mixing with the paper. You're getting the true sensation of the fragrance. And on skin, you guys, this is just one of the most incredible fragrances I've ever smelled. It's unisex, I think, definitely leaning feminine. This is a very feminine perfume to me. I don't think I'd want to smell this on a man. I would say this is like, I would say probably 80, 90%. Mm, I mean, anybody could wear it, but this isn't something I would want my boyfriend to put on. Let's put it that way. This is very feminine leaning to me. I would say like 85 to 90% feminine in my opinion. It's sweet. It's sexy. It's seductive. It's intoxicating. It is a sillage monster. Absolute sillage, sillage monster. Lasts all day. In, totally intoxicating you guys like if you put this on your skin and just give it like five minutes and leave your house or whatever it is that you're gonna do you will not be able to stop smelling yourself you will be blown away people around you will be like oh my gosh oh, I can smell your perfume it is so strong it smells really good what are you wearing I got a compliment on this perfume the very first day I did a wear test this is the type of perfume I would wear for a night out um, special occasion, formal occasion. I would not wear this to the office. This is not a daytime perfume for me. This is definitely a night out. Super sexy, super seductive, super intoxicating, sweet. I don't know, you guys. I don't know. It's just mind-blowingly good. Oh my God, it's just so good. It's just so good. It's just so good. <laughs> I'm sorry. So well blended and such a masterpiece that I can't put into words quite what it smells like and I can't put into words quite the way it makes me feel. It's just incredible and you have to take my word for it. <laughs> That's all there is to it. If we have similar taste and if you're looking for the single most mind-blowing enchanting perfume you've ever smelled that will knock everybody's socks off including your own every single time you wear it, Ombre Magique from Maison Steel. Absolute 10 out of 10 masterpiece, 10 out of 10 performance. Need I say more? Okay, you guys, and in our number one spot, the last perfume in today's video, my favorite one out of the entire haul, and this is the newest addition to my top 10 perfumes ever. Must have, top 10 for life, can't imagine not having this, totally obsessed, almost brought a tear to my eye how good this perfume is. Almost brings a tear to my eye how much I love this. Absolutely jaw-dropping, mind-blowing, incredible. The hype is real. This is Yves Saint Laurent Baby Cat. So this is, I think, the newest or one of the newest releases from Yves Saint Laurent, I think. Don't quote me on that. This perfume I've kind of seen just floating around, like randomly would see this bottle popping up on social media. Hadn't really heard much about it, hadn't smelled it before. Don't live near a boutique, can't go in and smell it. I live in Canada as well, and I hear that this perfume is either impossible or difficult to get in the United States. This perfume, for some reason, is hard to get, but for once, you guys, for once, Canada comes out on top. Little round of applause for Canada, <laughs> because this perfume, for me, was actually very, very easy to get. And if you guys, in any way possible because I know I have a lot of viewers from the US. If you can get your hands on this, I 10 out of 10 recommend. This is one of the best perfumes I've ever gotten my nose on in my life. It is utterly intoxicating. This is everything I love about a perfume in a bottle. Little close up of the bottle here. So it says baby cat on the front, Yves Saint Laurent. You have this nice little plaque on the front. The juice is this really nice like boozy kind of leathery looking color which is perfect for the scent that's inside and then you have the Yves Saint Laurent magnetic cap so really really nice presentation is a magnetic cap and love the tall sleek look of the bottle this is just a beautiful minimalistic bottle design that would look pretty on anybody's perfume tray. So the notes that you have in here are black and pink pepper, black pepper, elemi. In the middle you have olibanum and saffron. I guess I'm developing a thing for saffron by the looks of it. And in the base you have bourbon vanilla, suede, and cedar. So to look at these notes you guys, again after I saw a couple of reviews about this perfume because after I kind of caught wind about this one, what really intrigued me first of all is the fact that I think Yves Saint Laurent makes some amazing fragrances in their Vestaire collection. I also really loved the name Baby Cat. That kind of, I'm not going to lie, that kind of just like grabbed my attention. I was like, that sounds really interesting. Baby Cat. I was like, I have to know 
what this perfume smells like. And I started reading reviews, looking at ratings, um, watching a few, like any review I could find on this perfume. And it did get really good reviews. Not a single person who I saw review this perfume or talk about it disliked it. Not a single person said they disliked it. And I thought that was pretty phenomenal as a well. So this is one of those perfumes, you guys, that you don't have to be into niche and you don't have to be into like different unique fragrances to like this. I think this is so mass pleasing and probably so much more mass pleasing than you would think, especially to look at the notes, seeing that black pepper and the olibanum and the suede and the cedar, you might think that that sounds a little masculine or it just doesn't sound like super mass pleasing, right? But it's actually incredible, you guys. And I'm kind of scared to smell it because oh, this perfume just, I'm telling you, like this olfactive stuff is exhausting because it it all triggers areas of your brain that are just like, you almost feel like you need a nap after like smelling this many good perfumes in a row. Tell me if you understand what I'm saying. Okay. Oh my God. Oh my God, you guys. I could scream or cry how much I love this perfume. I don't know whether I wanna scream or cry in a good way, how much I love this perfume. It literally, intoxicates me. It literally uh, fries my brain how good this is. I like, wow. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. So this is just one of the most beautiful, beautiful, incensey vanilla suede fragrances I've ever smelled. And that makes it sound so boring. Incense, vanilla, suede, I'm telling you guys, this is incredible. And it's better, again, as most perfumes are, it is better on skin. It's better when you wear it. The sillage and the scent bubble that you get from this perfume is absolutely intoxicating, absolutely addictive. Such an incredible fragrance. Very different from Ombre Magique, very different from Luby Prince. Worlds different from Guidance, totally different. This is more of that, I, I would say it could almost be signature scent in the fall winter but I wouldn't wear it that often because this is so special to me. I would not want to wear it every single day. I wouldn't want to get sick of it. I wouldn't want it to become boring or too every day. This is an incredible, absolutely fabulous fragrance for evenings out, nighttime, date night, um, or any day when you just want to feel a little extra incredible. Any day you just want like more pep in your step, but it would have to be a cool day. This is not great for warm weather, I don't think. So, oh my God, it's so, so good. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so when you first spray this, and I know when I first sprayed it, lots of incense. You do have to like incense to like this fragrance. The incense is the star of the show here. You're getting a lot of incense, but you do get a lot of delicious, super sweet, delicious bourbon vanilla. You also get a little bit of a suede leather accord. But that suede that's in there is not harsh or abrasive or car seat or leather jacket or anything like that. It's a very beautiful, really well done suede. It's just very palatable and very soft and very enjoyable. This is such a masterpiece, you guys. The incense in here just makes all the difference for this perfume. The incense is the star of the show and it truly transforms this perfume into something mind-blowingly good that I've never experienced before in a fragrance and I'm just so so I'm loving it so much and I didn't think that I loved a incense dominant fragrance this is very much a suede and vanilla but it's also very much an incense vanilla so you do have to like incense it's just super intoxicating and super sexy and alluring and addictive and oh god Wow. Oh my God, you guys, I can't even, I told you sometimes perfume makes me want to cry. This is so good. I could cry so good. I could cry. <sighs> I just can't even. Um, so baby cat for me was a blind buy and it was, this is now probably my best blind buy of history. My best blind buy of history. My other two top blind buys before this, like before this year were Luby Rouge and blue turquoise. Those were the two most like mind blowingly incredible, like blind buys that I'd ever done. Um, this one is now on that list and actually this tops it. So this is now officially my best blind buy of all time. It is officially in my top 10 best ever. It is one of, if not my new favorite perfume. It is everything I love about perfume. It is what I want to smell like. It is, um, it's just, it's just, 
<laughs> incredible. So that is why I sell baby cat. And like I said, when it comes to performance, all the perfumes in this video are great. This is no exception. Just, you don't need very much of this. A couple sprays, it will last you all day, all night. It has great sillage. It is intoxicating. It will make you fall in love with yourself. <laughs> you will walk out of the house and you will just knock your own socks off. That's how good it is. Super seductive, super sexy. Um, masculinity slash feminine, I think perfectly unisex again. If a man wears this, forget about it. I don't care your name. I don't care what you do for a living. Very mysterious, very sexy, very seductive. This just does something to me that no other perfume has done before. So I absolutely love it. Totally, totally, totally obsessed. I'm super sad for people that it's so hard to get. I know that some people in the US have managed to get their hands on it. And I don't know if that's because they had like a third party, like they were able to ship it to somebody and then that person shipped it to them or, but I really, really recommend getting this. This one is absolutely worth the hype. And, um, I can't say anything more about it than that. So you do need to get your nose on this. 100%. I also thought that I heard somebody say it was already discontinued. Is that a thing? Because if this is discontinued, this is one that is backup bottle worthy. All right, guys. So those are the seven perfumes in today's video. And I just want to do a quick recap. Um, so initially we had ivory root from Zerzhov, which is an amazing fragrance, very spicy and woody, but, and although I really like it, I think you guys could tell it was nowhere near the amount of love that some of the other ones were for me. We also had Fire at Will, which is a beautiful, enjoyable vanilla, but again, not mind-blowing the way that some of the other ones were. We also had Santal Don Shaw from Armani Privé, which honestly, you guys, this is such a beautiful sandalwood. I'm still very much getting to know it because sandalwood is like a new thing for me, but I really absolutely love the way that this smells and the way that it wears. And then we get into my top four sort of wow factor fragrances, which is the Homage Guidance, which I do have a full bottle coming, Christian Louboutin's Luby Prince, Maison Sears Ombre Magique, and YSL's Baby Cat. So those are my new part of my new collection. I have lots of other ones coming to share with you guys. I also have tons of samples, decants. I'm going to be sharing with you guys so many new discoveries over the next couple of months. I am so excited. I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope that you found maybe a new perfume that you're interested in trying. I hoped that I help you make a decision about a perfume and that's it for today's video. So that was it for today's video, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that I helped you find a great perfume in today's video and hope to see you guys all very soon in my next one. Bye for now.